Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about cloud gateway solutions. This is something that QNAP have really, really been working on and today I mainly want to talk about two major applications, one more than the other. I want to talk about Virtual JBoard and for me, more importantly, Hybrid Mount. These are two uh, up and coming gateway solutions, both of which are available in beta right now in QTS if you check it out. And at the QNAP Tech Day event yesterday, I learned loads about these two applications and mainly why they are such a big, big, big deal. Now, if you want to learn more about this and my voice annoys the hell out of you, and let's face it, you're only human, I do recommend you check out the Nascan Bear article. They've um, basically gone from the entire seminar that was there. I've gone through all of the highlights, but I'm going to be utilizing this to make sure I stay on track because let's face it, I do like the sound of my own voice. But let's get straight to it. Cloud Gateway Solutions. What is the big deal? Surely when you buy a NAS, that should be it. You should be sorted. You should be able to access your NAS via the cloud and the network, and that's it. You're done. But it's really not as simple as that. For a start, a number of you out there do utilize cloud services. Whether you like it or not, whether you know or not, you are using the likes of Google Drive, OneDrive, and more for your emails, for your cloud space, or you utilize cloud space knowingly to back up things like localized storage and mobile phone, or just because a Dropbox seems to be easier in the short term. Now, these spaces of cloud space, whether you're a home user that's got two to five gig, or you're an enterprise level user that's got one, five, six, or whatever numbers of terabytes with either small farm folder based storage areas like Google and Dropbox, or large scale ones like Backblaze and Joint Vault block level type stuff. If you are utilizing cloud storage, chances are from time to time that you need access to that data. And this is where things like hybrid mount from QNAP are very, very important. They're giving you the ability to not just synchronize with that data because you don't want to use up space on your NAS with that cloud space. You want to be able to access that data. Moreover, utilize that data via the NAS. And that's what hybrid mount does. It, use, it uses hybrid storage um, systems that's incorporating cloud and NAS storage and merges them and mushes them together. It does that in a number of ways, the most important of which is hybrid mount, which is when you get your cloud space, let's say your Google Drive, and you take your space of Google Drive, let's say it's 25 gigabytes of cloud space, and you mount it on the NAS very, very easily in a very user-friendly fashion. So via the likes of FileStation or using proprietary QNAP apps or as a mounted drive, you are able to see that Google Drive storage. It will appear as another volume. It will appear just as another area of space, like a drive. Now, this isn't to be confused with synchronization. Um, which is something you would see, or Cloud Sync, something that the likes of Hybrid Backup um, Sync 3 offer. Synchronization is when you've got a cloud space mirrored to an area of space on your NAS, the two of which are always the same. They can either be synchronized or time managed with incremental, or they can do versioning where you keep lots more data than is on one or than the other. But in essence, the space that you have in the cloud will also occupy the same amount of space or greater on the NAS. What this is, is completely different. This takes that cloud storage and bolts it to the side of your NAS. It makes it available to see and interact with as, it, as if it is local. And it does this with intelligent caching. What will happen is, if you are editing the files on that cloud space via hybrid um, hybrid mount, so that's whether you're using FileStation or your own proprietary applications, what will happen is that area, those blocks that you are editing, will be on the NAS and you edit them. And every change you make to them, that small portion of the overall cloud area will be reflected back on the cloud in real time, near enough instantaneously. And therefore, the synchronization between the NAS, or I say synchronization, not the right word, the mounting and the caching of your NAS and the cloud space happening in the background in its own way, in its own pace, and scheduling that and doing that when it's as convenient or as fast as possible happens in the background. And you edit with the files on the NAS. You are dealing with the, fa the file locally, which means you are going to be dealing with um, gigabit connectivity and not limited by upload and download. Now, you can mount multiple hybrid um, 
um, mount, mount drives. You can attach drop boxes and Google drives or bigger, bigger elephant drives and more. And you can bolt those onto the side of your NAS um, in uh, terms of functionality and allow yourself to interact with them. Now, there are loads of reasons why you might do this. Snapshots to make sure that your snapshots are kept off site rather than cloning them on the NAS and synchronizing them. You can utilize it for off site backups or for distributing files in a way that is far more user friendly to your client base. So if you've got a NAS and all your internal staff are all using a NAS, but your clients are using the likes of Dropbox or Google Drive, this gives you a means to bolt that storage, mount that uh, cloud storage to your NAS, and then interact with it using your proprietary applications, be they QNAP based or third party, as well as utilizing the QNAP applications like QSearch, um, QFiling, um, um, QMaggie, all those different Q applications can interact with the cloud data as if it was local data, as well as all the connected users, and they can interact with it, and at the same time, that will synchronize with the cloud in real time in the background, and I keep using the word synchronize, and what I really mean is cache, sorry, it will cache the data that changes with the NAS and therefore make that accessible. Now, it's worth highlighting that there are certain rules, much like Gremlins, such as if multiple people are dealing with one file, it's worth remembering that the very last person to edit that file their version, if they all mount and they're all accessing the same mounted cloud drive, so you've got your Dropbox mounted to the QNAP and multiple connected users to the QNAP are accessing it, the result is the last person editing it, their version will become the final version, which may be problematic. So to counter this, in the software, there is the ability to either have it set up to be that way, or in the event that multiple users are accessing the file at the same time, you can create another version of that file. Now, don't get me wrong, that's not ideal at this stage because that will start utilizing more of your cloud space, something you're paying monthly for. But for now, that's the best way to do it. You know, I do say they're looking into ways of doing it and locking that file so if one user is interacting with it on the cloud, it will lock it within the QNAP via hybrid mount and therefore stop other users from making changes. So that's something that can hopefully affect that and that's something that's going to be coming very, very soon. But moving from that, we can talk about the other cloud gateway that QNAP are working on and that's Virtual JBOD. Now, Virtual JBOD or VJBOD allows you to take all or some of available space on a NAS and mount that space. It lets you take that space and mount it much the same way we just discussed with Cloud Space and make it available to other NAS users and indeed make it available to the cloud because some cloud services allow you to bolt NAS space as if it's their own, so you'll go to the cloud provider, pass me the NAS Virtual JBOD, this lovely area of space on the NAS, and then they can interact with it on the cloud, and in the background, the cloud gateway and Virtual JBOD, and hybrid mount, if that's the case, will then synchronize it and allow this lovely connection between these connected users. Now, hybrid mount solves a number of things, along with Virtual JBOD as well. I know I'm focusing more on one than the other, I know. But the two case scenarios that um, QNAP are keen to point out are as follows. One is the most obvious one, the one that I can definitely get on board with. That's one where, say, at the moment, your office, and I'm not going to mention some, there's a company I was talking to not a short while ago uh, based in Brighton, uh, Brighton, England, God, I love the seaside, who have got 10 people, some of which are editors, working from files on a Dropbox. That means you've got up to 10 people, even though their internet connection's pretty good, the upload not so good. Even though they're all interacting and working on Dropbox files and they've got localized synced folders on their Mac and Windows systems, they're still all utilizing the upload and download, which is incredibly inefficient. Now, hybrid mount would allow them to get one NAS, stick it in the middle, all those users connect to the QNAP, don't get me wrong, lovely, all there, they're all connecting it via LAN, so they're all sharing 100 megabits or more if they're using 10 GB or something, and the QNAP is the only thing connected to that internet and it will only reflect the changes on the metadata of the connected users and only the changes of what they are doing will then be passed through the NAS and you know actioned on the cloud service. Now 
this um, application is available. Both of them, in fact, Hybrid Mount and Virtual JBOD are both available right now in the App Center. So if you do want to check those out, do head over to your QNAP NAS if you've already got one. Look in the App Center and give them a go. Um, there are two licenses included when you originally set it up. But if you do want to attach more services, you will have to pay for licensing on. I'm not sure if they've got the licensing system live yet. And I know a number of you do not like licenses. But be honest, this is a new service and they need to see how it works. And once you're working with cloud providers, there's all kinds of stuff to do with uh, licensing. And do remember that they are porting over a lot of the techniques to do with compression and duplication where they are supported here. Stuff that we have seen a lot of in QTS Hero and upcoming innovations from QNAP's own tech day, as well as file streaming and file pinning are things that are being introduced into these services. Stuff that we've already seen on kind of the client side with Windows systems, um, but now we're seeing more and more of it of QNAP integrating this into their own services and therefore these get passed over to the client side applications are so very interesting indeed. But apart from that, that really is everything. I'm going to quickly look through this to see if there's anything I've forgotten and you'll know if I forgot anything because there'll be a chop here in the video. I knew I'd forget something and of course that is to do with Virtual JBOD. Now Virtual JBOD is going to require you to have some unfettered space. So a number of services that you're going to see released at Tech Day coming very, very soon do involve making sure that your file system is set up in the right way. So a number of you when you first set up your QNAP for the first time, you probably notice it asked you to uh, look at space reservation, whether you wanted to use 100% of the overall space for the storage pool or create a stor storage pool on the volume and therefore that storage pool takes up as much or as little as you want. If you are going to use Virtual JBOD, you do have to remember that you have to have an area of unreserved space on the storage pool that hasn't been taken by the volume. To put that into caveman speak, because I know what I've just said can be jargon to a number of you, when you set up a NAS for the first time, your hard drives are installed, and then on top of that, they install QTS, the QNAP Linux operating system, and from storage after that, you need to create a storage pool. A storage pool takes all the available storage of all the drives you see and combines them all together, and that's where RAID comes in. On top of that, you would then create a volume, and a volume is where all the data is going to live. And the volume can be as big as all the available space that's there on the storage pool underneath, or you can use less for the volume. And the space that you're not going to use, this can be utilized for your uh, uh, virtual JBOD that can be mounted on other NASs or can be mounted on cloud service providers. So do bear that in mind for virtual JBOD that it's something you're going to have to integrate early on. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you enjoyed it, click like. Do check out the NAS Compare article in the description that goes into far more detail about a number of these um, elements of these two great applications currently in beta. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time.